I'll never be as, you know, it'll never happen. Yeah. And these kids are learning stuff quick. Let me ask you, did you ever get a chance to look at the information they put out there? And were they, I don't expect you to give too much, but everybody had the question. Everybody said, everybody had one question. Did it was, were they just putting random information and just making us believe it was real? Or did they actually do the job right? Did they actually get some of Dana's information out there, whether it's past, present, or anything like that? Yeah, I think they did get some of this information out there. Sure. I didn't double check the social security number, but I think it was correct. The address was correct. Um, I think one of the phone numbers might have been wrong. Right. You know how many credit cards are probably in Dana White's name today? Uh, uh, I, but I, we all wanted to know in the MMA community. It was like, oh, listen, I'm not the type, I'll never go back to look at it, I could care less. Yeah. But to know they actually did it, Yeah. I know, because you know Dana's looking at me, he's telling her, no, nah, they, they didn't, that ain't me. Yeah. And if it really is him, I can picture him sitting there pissing all over himself, saying, oh my God, you know what I mean? We're talking about a multi-millionaire with a social security number on the internet. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Um, well, it's like when um, I did the video and um, the, U the UFC Zuka had it pulled right away. Right. Um, but then they also started claiming that that wasn't Dana's mom that was on it. Yeah. It was an actress who was faking it and the whole thing was a fake, you know? Like. Um, there's pictures of you and your son. Yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> no. uh, it's a joke. Uh, it's really a joke. Now, let me ask you, with Dana's lack of professionalism, uh, do you ever feel that there's a time where uh, maybe the Fertitas or anybody who feels Dana is bad for MMA? Do you think there will ever come a time that we have the UFC or MMA without Dana? Or do you believe that they, basically all, you know, basically Dana's always going to be there if the UFC exists? I'm just kind of curious on your thoughts. With the Fox deal, obviously, with things that's going on, is there ever going to be that time where Dan is bad for MMA and maybe he's put out or, you know, by Fox or the Fertitas or anybody? Yeah, I don't think the Fertitas would ever pull them. Um, there's too much there with all of them. Sure. But I, I think Fox is, is, you may say, see a lot of changes with Fox. I think they're already trying to rein them in. And I said the uh, ESPN um, episode there about the fighters for uh, right. the pay for the fighters. And um, normally you would see Dana in a tirade, you know, one of his blogs or something. But instead, I mean, very little was said by him. And it's it was good. Lorenzo who sat down. Yeah, so I thought that was very telling. Yeah, as damage to where, control. That's yeah, as right. to where you're going to see them going now that Fox sort of has control of everything. I think they have to. Uh, you know, Dana, first of all, Dana is vicious with business, and I've said it many times. I commend him for the work he's done. Yeah. But there, there comes a point where I think he can, without evolving himself, everybody's got to continue to evolve, and I don't think Dana's willing to. I think he's, uh, he's got a god complex right now. So, and now that's even funnier because now all of a sudden he's an atheist, right? Now, when, now <laughs> with you, you said he was, a, he was a religious man before. Is that right? Oh yeah. We went to church on Sundays. He went to a private Catholic school. He was an altar boy. You know, he was married in the church. His kids were all baptized and christened in the church and right. everything. So, yeah, to hear him say he's an atheist, well, I was surprised. More changes. Um, kind of your thoughts on MMA in general. What are your thoughts on steroids? Do you think it is rampant in the UFC and MMA as much as... Uh, you know, I've heard numbers from fighters such as 85%, 95%. Um, you've been around for a long time. You've talked, obviously, with the man, you know, according, you know. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's it's more out there than even we think it is? And maybe even Dana. I, I, Dana's got awfully big since UFC 30 when he first popped his skinny neck and <laughs> on, the, on the screen. Uh, kind of curious. Uh, you think Dana is partaking, and do you think steroids is a huge issue in MMA? Um, I said in another interview, I do think Dana, and, and that's the exact reason. You know, I mean, when you see him way back in the beginning, what yeah. a skinny old thing he was, and you look at him now, and what's he say? He's benching 300 pounds. He's a big guy. Something. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure if he's not still doing it, he did it at one time. 
sometimes the fighters, some of them look like they have done it, you know. Um, I don't, I don't know how prevalent it sure. really is. Sure, I didn't, yeah, and I, I, I know a lot of times the only people that really know are the fighters. Uh, they talk about a lot, but with you being so close in the industry, I didn't know if maybe you had an inside knowledge on it uh, or not. We've talked about the UFC in general and their success. Are they a monopoly um, at this point? And, and, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that fight me out. There's thousands all over the world, hundreds all over, definitely in the United States. But at this stage, do you think the UFC has become a monopoly? I know there's the investigation that was going on. Um, is this it? Are they the NFL? Are they have they monopolized the sport of MMA? And kind of a second part of that question is: Do you think the fighters are underpaid because of this monopoly? Yeah, I mean, I, I said a while ago I thought they were a monopoly. Um, you are starting to see some more um, MMA organizations coming up. I saw where um, one just started in India. Yeah. Um, Dana make sure he bashed them, by the way. Oh, uh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> I saw somebody bashing the owner of it on Twitter Kim and, and Pabilla, just saying some nasty right. stuff to him. So yeah. I sent him a little tweet. Kim Pavia, he's a good guy. He's yeah, just show. telling him congratulations. And you know what? Dana hates him, right? Because they, they got a lawsuit because Kim Pavia was a manager, you know. And, oh, he was. Yeah. He managed. Yeah, fighters. Fighters, and, right? you know, just like you know, Dana. Anyone who doesn't kiss Dana's ass is a problem, you know. Now Kenny Blue P has moved on from managing to obviously running a show in India. Yeah. Which, for the record, he did it before Dana got there. You gotta give him credit. Kim Pavia made uh, Pavia or however you say his name. Bottom line, he did a show in India. Dana has it, so yeah. you gotta give him some credit. Uh, fighter, fighter pay? Are they ever pay? You know, I don't know. I know like the guys from way back. In the beginning, uh, Randy and Chuck and T, those guys all get decent money. Um, the new guys coming in, I honestly don't know what they made. Four grand. Is that it? Four grand to win. Uh, four grand to fight. Four grand to win. Uh, it's a lot. It's the base bottom scale. Yeah. Um, you look at something. If they fight, um, if they fight four times a year, uh, it's basically thirty-two grand. And keep in mind, they got to pay. It's if they win all right. four fights. And they have to pay their trainers, their right. gyms, their equipment. Probably walk away with 20, 15. Yeah. Uh, and, and Dana White, if there's 400 pay per view, thousand pay per view sales, times that by half, $25. Cause I'm sure somebody gets that at $25. We're talking about millions of dollars that each UFC show is making, and and their payroll for a whole car maybe a million dollars, but they're making. 100 million, or well, let's say 50 million. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, the UFC that they did in Toronto, where they had 55,000 people, biggest show ever. Mm -hmm. Their payroll for that show, uh, the fighters' payroll, was right at a million dollars. We know that they made probably 100 million off that show. That was a big show. You yeah. know what I mean? Pay per view buys were at a, were at a million almost, 800,000, and the, the attendance there was, you know, 55,000. Uh, I'm just saying, in terms of other sports, you know, most athletes make about 50% of the revenue. Mm -hmm. I'd say in MMA they make about 5%, you know, maybe 10, uh, probably less than that, or less than 10%, definitely. Um, at this stage, with people getting, you know, risking their health, do you think that the monopoly is the reason for this? And do you believe it's a monopoly right now? Do you think, do you think, even though there's other organizations, do you feel that if they, you know, get up there, that he has the power to crush every last one? Well, I, I do think they have the power to crush them. Although, with the um, investigation in Washington, even though it's closed right. now, you know, um, that can always come back. Right. You know, and I think they have to be a little bit more careful now sure. with how, how they handle themselves with other organizations. And some of the other organizations are starting to work deals now. Like, you know, the UFC left, left Spike, but Spike still wants um, MMA. Bellator is that. Right? Yeah, so they've got somebody else. So now Bellator has, you know, I think stepped up a step. They got bought by Viacom, actually, which right. they're going to be huge, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's potential, but look at Strikeforce, they had potential. Yeah. Dana, 
People are saying that Dan won't be able to buy a Bellator because Viacom owns him, and Viacom already has a, a shitload of money, so to speak. Right. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think we may have some people out there. Do you think a monopoly is good for the sport? No. No. Not at all. Neither do I. Uh, I know for like the NFL and NBA it is, um, but at the same time with, with this, the UFC can only have so many people on the roster, you know what I mean? And so oh, there's thousands of fighters everywhere, and, and I think it affects the pay. I think the turnover is amazing right now with yeah. the fighters. I mean, before, like I said, I keep going back to the old days sure. in the beginning with Randy and Chuck and Tito and Jens Pulver and some of those guys. multi um, Yeah. Uh, Eve Edwards, um, they've been around for years, you know, and they developed a huge fan base, and they had fight after fight after fight. I don't even, I mean, I don't go to the fights anymore, but still, uh, people bring up players, and I, I'm like, I don't even know who that is anymore. I watch every event in the show.